6 p.m. on the East Coast, and live for streaming. It's your boy 8 Bit Amethyst streaming to you live right now, which I've already said once or twice. I'm really just talking a lot to kind of get the audio feedback from my microphone, so I'm saying a bunch of stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Um, but we're going to be playing more Mass Effect. Um, I think last time. We stopped an asteroid from crashing into a planet, so <laughs> um, I, I I say Shepard's on the roll right now. I'm playing Femship, playing Femship, um, Paragon, Femship, Paragon, Engineer. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's get the ball rolling here. And we can go ahead and turn off this song, which is, it's a bopper. All right, I like this song. This one goes, this one goes hard. I will say the quality of the music on the soundtrack app has gotten substantially better than when it first launched. dropping me right back in the action just the way I like it um I think no that's not true oh never mind I was gonna say something kind of obvious TSM what's good homie how you doing man how's life treating you yeah I get my uh stream manager back up right now But yeah, man, I'm back. It's good to be back. I had some um, real technical dis uh, technical issues <laughs> two weeks ago, and like I lost all of my um, stream settings. So you know, you might see me like pause a lot to like check little things. But if anything sounds weird to you, let me know um, because again, I had to like reconfigure everything on the fly. I think the only thing that stayed were my GIFs. That's it. But anyway, it's uh, it's good to have you here, man. I'm uh, just playing some Mass Effect. Hold on. Alright, we're back. Photo mode. 
So yeah, um, I'm also putting together like a little scrapbook for future screenshots because this game has a camera mode. I think the first time I saw a camera mode like this was in, um, ah crap, I gotta hide the UI, um, was in Horizon Zero Dawn, actually, and, um, that game, it, which you've played, so you know exactly what I'm talking about, but yeah, that game was amazing, loved it. Linton, my man, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the stream. It's me and uh, TSM hanging out right now. Not sure if I'm going to do like another main quest at the moment. Okay, there we go. I think I might have some uh, side quests that I still need to do. None of them which are uh, the Citadel at the moment. So we've gone to we've done the Liara mission already. Yeah, we've done the Liara mission already. Uh, I think the next one, the next main one I need to do is Barrows. Uh, we don't need to hop right into that because, like I said, I'm trying to do a quasi-completionist playthrough. Um, just the missions, though. I'm not like doing all the dialogue and stuff, and the off chance that you decide you want to play Mass Effect yourself, I'm not going to spoil everything. And I save time. I'll spend as much time on that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think we can talk to Rita's sister, because we, like, shot up the club. <laughs> like, we completely, we completely shot up the club. Uh, TSM redeemed Hydrate. Oh, I actually do need to redeem Hydrate. Um, I've taken some uh, some uh, medicine that uh, dries you up, dries you up. Um, so they tell you like drink tons of water while you're on it. And I'm on the uh, the off side of that. <laughs> yeah, the H two O man, the H two O. Hydra system, Argos Road cluster. Okay. So we need to go to our ghost road first and then look for the hydro system. Message coming in. Patching it through. This is a general distress call from the Sacred Angel Medical Transport. Critical system failure. Losing power. Emergency landing. Argos. Communications failing. Life support. Emergency transponder. Won't last. Please hurry. Oh yeah, um, I think I remember this quest. But anyway, so interesting thing with some of the worlds you'll go on, as you can see here, level two heat hazard. Um, you can only be outside of your vehicle for so long um, before really bad things happen. So we'll go ahead and bring Caden and Ashley out here. Because again, I'm going off of memory. I think I know what happens. And we're not gonna need to leave the bacon, <laughs> if I'm correct. We're not gonna need to leave it. Um, okay, so let's see here. Open up the map. 
this is us right here. We have an anomaly to the north. We'll just go ahead and drop a marker on that and uh, take advantage of our rocket boosters. It's heavier than it looks. Okay, it's heavier than it looks. These rockets are absolutely necessary. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, no. That's too steep. That's too steep. We're gonna have to try it this way. So if you go up in the incline, but you don't go directly up, but it doesn't always work, but it works more often than not, as you can see. Physics are still a thing. I have an anime girl on my PC screen that <laughs> would have been proud. I'm on my way. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Everyone knows uh, Linton is uh, king of the waifus, so yeah. You win his approval, you're you're good to go. Good to go. <laughs> While searching the record, you found a very old letter stamped with the Gothis colony insignia. Fortunately, the text is indecipherable. All right, so that is a Turian insignia. We have no idea how old that uh, particular artifact is. And the thing with these artifacts is they're not really relevant um, to, uh, to your game. Like, it's just lore stuff and you get the XP and credits. So they're worth getting, but it's not the end of the world if you miss one. And since this is a remastered Mass Effect 1, not having all of the EXP isn't as much of a detriment because you needed your stamps in the original game. Yeah. Saw, but I'm not going to summer school. Oh, okay, so you just take in, just chilling at home. Yeah, I actually, I actually don't know how it is um, over in your neck of the woods. I know in the United States, uh, if you are in high school, there is no summer school. Um, there's usually like um, programs that you can enroll in. In school point. And go over the summer, but uh, most um, most school districts don't offer summer school. Now, once you get to college, that's different. You can opt in for. 
for summer semester. And in fact, most schools force you to take at least one summer semester for your major. Like, they make you take it. You can't just schedule fall or spring only, which is a pain in the ass because summer courses are condensed. And um, in my opinion, they're harder because it's the same information just over a smaller period of time. So there's more homework, there's more to read, um, the tests are more frequent. So I personally don't like um, summer school. <laughs> so if you can avoid it, great. I wouldn't go to summer school if I had a choice. Now, if you're trying to get your shit fast, then by all means do it. But I, I wasn't trying to. Like all that headache just to graduate um, one semester early. So we did that. Actually, crap, hold on. I gotta look at my other quest. So we know that was a big debate, but we cleared it out. Alright, Sentry System, Hawking Edda Cluster. This could get kinda hairy though. I might I might wait on this. Nah, fuck it. We'll go. If if it's bad, I can always blow <laughs> and just pretend it never happened. All right, so Hawking Edda Cluster Sentry System. And that was the wrong button. Gemini Sigma, Ernest Tone, Shark Veda. Message coming in, Commander. Big surprise, the Alliance needs you again. <laughs> Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett with Alliance Command. We've got a mission for you. An Alliance officer named Major Kyle has set up a small compound in the Hulking Edda Cluster. He's attracted a number of followers, mostly biotics. He's become an outspoken critic of the Alliance, and we believe he's mentally unstable. This could be trouble, Shepard. I'll look into it. Three days ago, we sent two Alliance representatives to meet with him at his compound. They've disappeared. We believe Kyle and his followers killed them. That compound is a cult, Shepard. They call him Father Kyle now. He set himself up as some kind of religious leader. What else can you tell me about Major Kyle? He used to be a model soldier, but something happened to him at Torfin. Too many Alliance soldiers died under his command. Couldn't cope with the guilt. His psych evaluation showed he couldn't handle the stress of command anymore. He was given an honorable discharge in early retirement. We'd hoped he would get better in time, but we underestimated how far gone he was. Now it looks like it's too late. You said his followers were biotics? Yes. Major Kyle never showed any biotic tendencies himself, though. I think he's just latched onto a group he identifies with. Many biotics feel marginalized or ostracized by society. Kyle probably sees them as victims who need his protection, and they see him as someone who will fight for them. Unfortunately, he's convinced them that the Alliance is somehow responsible for all their problems. We can't let him go on like this. What were those Alliance representatives going to talk to Major Kyle about? They wanted to bring him back to an Alliance facility for treatment. Major Kyle served us faithfully for many years. We weren't going to abandon him. Given his state of mind, however, he probably saw them as a threat. We're almost certain he had his followers kill them. I might be able to end this without violence. That may not be possible, Commander. We don't want a bloodbath, but Kyle is dangerous. I'll trust you to use your judgment. Hack it out. All right, so we got hostage negotiation potentially uh, taking place here. And for some reason, my Alexa thought I was talking to her.
you didn't even listen for Hay this time. It's just you say anything that kind of sounds like her name and she listens up. Like, did you need me? No, no. <laughs> Alright, so this looks like the perfect world uh, to set up a cult. It's kind of remote, isolated, doesn't really have much of an atmosphere. So since we're dealing with biotics, Smart Money says that we're going to need to have some kind of biotic defense. Um, I think best route moving forward is we're going to bring Kay in and we're going to bring Liara. We don't have much in the way of combat strength, we're kind of squishy, but I don't really see us needing someone super tanky. Um, because adepts are squishy themselves, so we're all squishy. <laughs> Literally, everyone's squishy. Me being an engineer, I'm at the biggest disadvantage. Um, if it does end up being a combat situation, I will be at a huge disadvantage. Alright. But we can go ahead and get Kate and get it up here. Just give them some upgrades across the board. I just had Liara on the last mission I was on, so I really don't need to give her new stuff. So, Nexus 3, Omnitool. Oh, he actually, yeah, he is a um, tech biotic specialist. I believe they're the Sentinels. They should be Sentinels. Like, you can play as Cadence class, and in my opinion, it's the most um, OP. <laughs> like, if you want to play on easy mode, uh, then you play Sentinel. And then I ran Sentinel and Mass Effect 2 and 3 on Insanity difficulty because Insanity is Insanity. It's so hard. So, yeah. I cannot. Don't do that. I don't do that. Um, Alright, let's see. Yeah, we can give him upgraded Biotic Camp. I think, yeah, she's already got an upgraded Biotic Camp. And she doesn't have any tech skills, so that would be good. Giving her that. We don't need to give her that. <laughs> What's up, Rich? How you doing, brother? <laughs> Did somebody say Booba? <laughs> yes, yes. You you know the magic. You know the magic word of the stream. Booba is is in. It's Booba's love. Booba's life. <laughs> so yeah, man. Um, had a lot of fun. Had a lot of fun yesterday. Um, playing Garfield. It was great playing with all of you guys again. Good stuff. How's um, the uh, lasagna cup coming along? I know you're still setting it up. All right, we're gonna Omni Gel all of this. That's gonna give us or Omni Gel in the event I screw up and I need to like override something. I'm not in a real deficit. I can just do it. Um, all right, and I take a look here. Yeah, we can actually scrub these as well. And the reason why I'm doing that is because in late game, you're going to want to sell what you get. In early game, the stuff you get doesn't really have much value. So it's better served as um, Omnigel. You don't actually want to try to sell it unless you really need to get something important. And we're going to set him up with the uh, Tread Arounds. Actually, that's actually more important. Because if it does get hot, we're going to need to drop these guys pretty fast. You qualified, man. Nice. <laughs> Grats. <laughs> we can't have people tired from Garfield Cart. Lasagna Cop may not be in a year or 2022. That is the finals. True, true, true. Yeah. Because you, you want people to be enthusiastic. You want people to be enthusiastic. Um, so, yeah. If, if we're like gonna do the lasagna cup like next week or something um half of the winners are gonna wish they had lost and um 
sweaties like myself are gonna be like, you know, oh, 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 where's all the trailers? So yeah, no, I, I get it. I get it. Alright, yeah, she's got that. Alright, he actually needs some armor protection. 10 shields, mobile accuracy, cooldown reduction. As someone like him, who's more power focus, yeah, he needs that. Uh, um, I'm not really gonna make him use that very much. Go ahead, for a high explosive mod on the grenades, and then I will beef up my shoddy. All right, I think we're ready. Um, go back to squad. All right, actually, yeah, we got 10 points. Go ahead, remove the helmets. Um, we're going we're gonna to try to handle this as peacefully as we can. I would rather not have to body this entire cult of people. Again, we're doing a Paragon playthrough. That's why it's... Uh, if I were a renegade, <laughs> I'd be literally specking for combat. I'd probably bring like uh, Rex um, and Liara and just do work. Advanced first A, uh, and then Overload. Go ahead and I can do that. And then for the last point, Inspector Training some more health and bonuses and then for Caden we'll go ahead and max out Sentinel give him first aid barrier is super important since I'm an engineer I'm going to just have him focus his biotic stuff to make him a little more tanky and stasis in stasis you just freeze targets in place you don't um, actually do damage to them, but it's a very useful skill, especially against uh, charging enemies. Okay, I'm gonna finish some work. I'll see you, dude. All right, man. Thanks for dropping by. Appreciate you saying hi. Flip and advance motion, and then we have two more points. Can sink that in the first day and Liara has 11 points we'll go ahead and max out sorry scientist singularity we will also max out because that is her best skill in my opinion the best skill in the game um, and then work and again the reason why I feel that way is because singularity literally shuts down anyone that's not shielded so a lot of the enemies that can do really high damage to you, um, they usually don't have shields. Sometimes they do, but they don't always have shields. So if you have um, an adept on your team that can drop singularity, that will save your life actually. Because a lot of times um, you just get seen by those enemies that are resting. So we gotta we gotta get a shot for the gram. And we'll go ahead, high party. Got the fill off. We'll bring it a little more over the shoulder. Yeah, I think that's a good shot right there. That's a good shot. Alright. And can play around with like all of these things because of like filters and stuff. Can play. Like that's just the, the negative. The negative. I actually like it though. It's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Like especially when you got things that are like already colored. But it is jarring. Like it. It is. <laughs> it hits really really hard. Um, all right. So yeah, that's it for that. Get back into Mako right now. 
So as we know before, you know, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and find you this anomaly when they pop up. Because those are extra credits. And the reason why we do that is because, again, late game, the stuff that you want are some of the So the neat thing with Mass Effect 1, and this isn't something that you see in Mass Effect 2 and 3, which is unfortunate, but there are weapon grades. Well, you actually can see it in Mass Effect 3, um, but it says it's a little bit. This cluster of green pad, totally shacks out the snaking ranch at the built to them, and set up all the tracks that you can lay over the map of each of the So, that suggests that this area is inhabited, probably by the cult. Um, it's probably where some of the cult members are living. Alright, so we got a collection of great four weapons and um, equipment. So yeah, um, that's, what, what is it? Yeah, the Explorer 1, like the helmet looks pretty sick. And you actually see this helmet design in uh, Mass Effect 2. I think it's the um, Eclipse, the Eclipse Mercenaries. They pretty much all rock the Explorer 1 helmet. And I think it looks cool, man. It, it kind of reminds me of... Like... Like a skull, in a sense. But then it also reminds me of, like, a... Gorilla's face, if it were designed by an artificial intelligence. Because, like, you have the two nostrils there, you have the eyes, and the jawbone, so, like, it's got a pretty aggressive look, but it's real subtle. Like, you gotta, like, you know, you gotta really study it to get it. Another thing I missed, too, like, there's, there's armor options in Mass Effects 2 and 3, but... Not nearly as varied and diverse as the first game. It just feels like a true um, RPG. You know, Mass Effect 2 and 3, you're kind of going more the way of uh, Dragon Age. So, Dragon Age 2 and Dragon Age 3 in position um, had. A rather limited set of customizable options, like all of the armor that you would wear for your class pretty much all look the same. The only difference between them were like colors. And that was pretty weird. You know, juxtapose that with the Elder Scrolls series, and it's like a you know, dozens of different armor sets and uh, outfits. Yeah, there's just so much customization over your look. But Mass Effect 1, you know, you didn't have any crew customization. Like, you pretty much wore the same outfit inside the Normandy, but your armor sets were pretty unique. You just couldn't customize bits. Digging under the beacon revealed a piece of scrap metal, likely from a very old freighter. It was marked on one side with the Mason and Outpost insignia. Alright, so another Tyrian Outpost, ancient, most likely. Uh, we got a dead body here. That is that is gnarly. Um, <laughs> a dead body that's like supposed to be on the ground, but not actually on the ground because you know. Um, so yeah, we'll crank up. We'll crank up there. Right this here. Get that shot. The front of the rover is crumpled in from impact. A glance inside tells you the occupants, probably a team of illegal wildcat miners, are dead. Debris is still sliding down the furrows left by his tires, silent and nearby humanity. Okay, so these are actually the inhabitants of that outpost that we just came from. So there's nothing more for us to report. They were illegally mining and um, looks like they crashed their vehicle, destroyed it, and died of exposure. It's kind of funny how there's this dude that's just like decomposed beyond all belief and you would think he would be wearing a suit or maybe one of the 
Oh no. Okay, this might be an on the jail situation. Oh no. Medical interface 4, infusion explosion 4. Nice. Alright, let's get to the compound now. I said this last stream, but you know, it, it's worth saying again. Like, the exploration part of Mass Effect 1 was probably one of its biggest selling points, like it really helped kind of ground you in the fact that this is um, a sci-fi exploration game, you know, humanity, still trying to like establish itself with but I can see why they also took it out, because pretty much all of the planets are just mountainous, rocky, different atmospheres and different soil colors. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, it's not, you know, it's not like uh, Star Citizen or anything like that where the biomes are radically different. Now, in BioWare's defense, um, they weren't spending over 10 years on development for Mass Effect 1. And, um, there's more planets, there's multiple systems, and they came out in 2007. Uh, Star Citizen is still under development. But, um, I'm waiting for a 314 to drop. Um, I am going to stream that when uh, it does drop as well. So, definitely looking forward to that. And if you're not someone who follows Star Citizen, you have no idea what I just said. Don't worry about it. Alright. So, we've got this bunker down here. We believe, if I remember this quest correctly, that's where he actually is. Um, but we're going to go in here first and see if we can have everyone kind of stand down and relax. Before we do that, I need to use the bathroom. <laughs> so I will be right back. Let's go ahead, throw up our little banner, and um, yeah.
Okay, so yeah, that was like, that was like painful. Not the using the restroom, but the fact that I didn't mute the Mass Effect music, and so it was playing in the background with the song, which completely ruined the ambiance. But um, anyway, luckily I wasn't gone for too long. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Um, but anyway, where were we? Uh, yeah, we're about to take a look inside this facility and see if we have any problems. Alright, picked up some meta gel. Hopefully we won't need to use that. This is a private sanctuary. Outsiders are not welcome here. I need to talk to the man in charge. It's important. Father Kyle wants nothing more to do with the Alliance. He shouldn't have killed those investigators. This problem isn't gonna go away. We won't let you take Father Kyle away. He protects us. We need him. The Alliance wants someone to pay for those murders. Let me speak to Major Kyle and maybe I can find some way to help you all get out of this alive. Wait. Father Kyle will speak with you. Head to the building at the far end of the compound. He'll meet you there. Alright, so we don't want to go here in the building because they don't trust us. Which, I, I, why would they? Like, we're the cops. <laughs> like, we're literally, we're literally the police. Um... So, hopefully we can defuse this uh, situation. So... Let's get a closer look here at the cultists. So the cultists pretty much look like regular civilians that you'll find in the Mass Effect world. Not necessarily on the Citadel. Like this is kind of the colonial dress. It's not as a... Uh, well, actually, yeah. Um, I meant to say the Presidium. You will see this in, like, the wards. Um, but, yeah. It's, uh... It's not drip I would rot, but, you know... It looks, uh, it looks decent. It's like, it's very Star Wars inspired. It's very Star Wars inspired. Now this is, this is a cuter outfit, you know, um, the, the women's variants. It's got like less busyness going on about it. The belt, buck, belt buckle um, also seems kind of purpose built as well, because it kind of hugs the, the glutes. So I feel like you could put some weighty items on it and um be supported but um yeah <laughs> Sick. okay so we're not gonna talk to anyone we're just gonna go straight for major call i don't think there's anyone we really can talk to so this dude is yoked like he's a biotic but he uh he doesn't just use his mind, <laughs> okay? That dude, that dude is yoked. He doesn't skip any day. Arm day, chest day, leg day, he's hitting all of them. Yeah, I hope you won't mind me getting around your locker. Free loot. <laughs> okay, so this is more, this is more the, of the Presidium dress right here. So this is um, a common dress that you'll see um, in ritzier parts of uh, the galaxy, and um, yeah, it you know it makes you kind of appreciate in a sense what Father Kyle's trying to do here because you have people from all walks, you know, people from all over. I mean, the way that they're uh, holding their weapons is uh, just. Classic Bioware. <laughs> so yeah, there's no significance as to why they're holding their weapons like that. It's just you you wouldn't pay that much attention to their character model, basically. It's just now that we have the photo mode and it's been 14 years, we now have the ability to just look at every little detail. Um, that looks like our guy. I am Major Kyle. I know why you've come. We have no quarrel with you. Why can't you just leave us alone? What happened to those other Alliance officers? The ones who came before me? They wanted to take me away from here. 
They wanted me to abandon this place, turn my back on my family. They spoke blasphemy. I did what I could to make their end quick and painless. I had no other choice. It was necessary to protect my children. Only I can keep them safe. The Alliance sent me to bring you in, Major. Can't you see this has gotten out of hand? Don't you understand you are endangering your followers? Hey, I respect that you have hunter. come under Thanks a banner of rate, peace, my friend. but I How cannot you do as you ask. If you take away their father, my children will be helpless. Were you uh were you doing speed running? Like I I was trying to see what game you were playing like when I got on because I saw that you were streaming, but it just said the plot thickens. So I don't know. Like was it Batman? Was it Zelda? Was it another game? Was it a workout stream? So what Major Kyle here is saying is uh and that's what I'm doing right now, Dream. Um, I'm doing like hostage negotiation. <laughs> Let me uh, check my settings just to make sure. You're playing Tales of Vesperia. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Another Tales game. <laughs> so, what's the plan for the rest of the day? All right, we, uh, you ordered your followers to kill those Alliance investigators. You must face the consequences of your actions. Do you really want your children to suffer for your sins, too? No. This... this was my fault. My children are innocent. Pure. Please. I never meant for this to happen. I... I'm sorry. You're doing the right thing, Major. Your children will be better off for it. Come on. Wait, if my children see you taking me away, they won't understand. They will attack, and you will be forced to kill them all. You have shown me the error of my ways, Commander. Now you must give me time to explain it to them. It is the only way they will understand. Please, give me one hour. After that, I will meet the Alliance authorities at the gates of my compound and surrender without violence. I give you my word. I'm gonna trust you. If you betray that trust, you and all your children will suffer. I will not betray you, Commander. Thank you for this. Joker can have the Fifth Fleet pick Major Kyle up. I just hope you know what you're doing, Commander. You should return to the Normandy and notify the Alliance of Kyle Surrender. They'll want to dispatch his ship to take him into custody. I'm almost done with it, I believe. Eat, go to Church of the Padres, maybe game some more. I'm not sure yet. How about you? Um, so, after this stream, um, I think I'm... Uh, there was a there was a game I think it was Subnautica. I'm trying to finish Subnautica, so I'm probably gonna play that and um, nurse my stomach because um, I don't know what I ate, but my stomach's pissed. Maybe it was the the hot sauce and pasta combo that I had the other day or something. I don't know. It's just it's just really pissed. <laughs> um, and then it didn't help that I went out uh, and ate with some friends yesterday. Um, Went to Umami. And, uh, yeah. You know, I gotta say, I gotta say, like, the quality of the food is as good as ever, but the service has really gotten lousy. Like, the waiters and waitresses are good. Like, they, they still will check in on you, make sure everything's good. But, like, you put in an order to the kitchen, and it takes forever for your food to come out, if it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I don't know, man. My, my opinion, my opinion on Moon Umami's kind of changing, you know. And, and I think it's probably just a communication breakdown issue. Like, I got I got billed for something that I didn't even order. Just, you know. Eh. But I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm just saying, like, all, all the uh, way they had to do was ask what I had ordered. And, you know, aside from the buffet, and I would have been like, yeah, I just, I just had the buffet. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I digress. We uh, defused this um, hostage situation. We can't trust the Alliance. So they're gonna say like little one-liners like that. Father Kyle says we biotics have to stick together. But it's cool though. And if you do go the renegade route and you have to like kill everyone, um, 
it's really not difficult. It's not difficult if you're prepared. If you're not prepared, then it can get really nasty. Because the thing in uh, the thing is with this game in Mass Effect One, <clears throat> biotic skills are really debilitating. Like really debilitating. Um, if you get hit by a push or something, you fall in slow motion. You know what I mean? It takes forever for you to get back up. It's a lot slower paced than in Mass Effect Two and Three, and um, yeah, it it sucks. It sucks. I also have to ask, uh, Dream, if you're still there, how'd your, um, Halo, your Halo, uh, stream go? Because I saw that you were talking to Steve, um, and asking him if he was interested in playing with you guys. Did he join, or was it just the three of you? Speaking of games, I also have to finish Watch Dogs. Like, I beat the main campaign of Watch Dogs Legion. And now I just need to beat the DLC, and then I will have buttoned up the game. I could have beaten it hours ago, but I just really took my time, because I like the game. I enjoy it. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's a good game, like, from a critical uh, perspective, but... It was pretty straight. Alright, so now that we've defused the situation, we should be able to explore this building without provoking um, any attacks. And I don't know if that would have been an issue the first time, but, you know, like, I think that would have... If we just started doing what we wanted, then I don't think we would have... But we can now just loot. And they've got some pretty decent gear here. Which will help us when we um, go to Pharaohs. Pharaohs can be punishing. If you're not prepared. Which is a common theme in this game. Like preparation is key. It's with really any RPG. It's not just Mass Effect in particular. Another thing that's changed too is like with the uh, med kits, um, if you get surplus med kits, they're, they're just wasted. But in Mass Effect 2, you get credits for surplus med kits. So every surplus med kit, yeah, you get 100. Reach was good so far. I got through half the campaign. Oh, nice. And you guys are playing on uh, Legendary, right? Or are you just talking about your own solo play? It turns out I wasn't able to link up with the other friend because he has it on Xbox. <laughs> oh no! That sucks. That sucks. That's a debate. That's a debate. Like, let's just call it for what it is. That's a debate. Like, my man reached out to you and said, Hey man, you know, you want to play Halo on uh, Legendary Difficulty? You're like, yeah, I'm in. And he's like, oh, by the way, I only have it on Xbox. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of a problem. Um, surely you knew that I was playing the Halo Master Chief Collection. It says it in the title. Master Chief Collection's not on... Uh, well, actually, no, it is on Xbox. I take that back. Yeah, you can get it on Xbox. It's on Xbox and PC. So I just rocked this solo on Heroic, lol. Yeah, man. Um, and that, honestly, that's better for you. Because like, I play casual. Like I played on normal difficulty. I wasn't trying to sweat, bro. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old, dude. I'm getting old. Like, yes, I'm 30, but my fitness age is 34. So, you know, as far as gaming's concerned, my reflexes are just not optimal. So I'm a normal mode normie. 
but you're still able you're still able to keep it on uh you're still able to keep it on heroic. <laughs> I gotta get my cat. <sighs> I'll go watch you. I have to put her in the bathroom because she's like Hey, yeah, and you know who knows? Maybe, maybe there's something in the neighborhood water. Cause like, my stomach's upset, her stomach's upset, but we don't eat the same food. <laughs> so, like, the only thing, only thing we have in common is the water. Like, we both drink from the tap. So, but I have a filter. I have a filter. But um, I don't know. It's supposed to filter out like lead and all kinds of stuff. But I don't know if it's. Uh, can't see my probe reel. <laughs> I did get wrecked in various spots, though. <laughs> True. Yeah, it's um, it's punishing. Like there were even parts on normal mode that um, you know, I'm like, if I were playing this on hero, I would be hating my life right now. Because I did, I did in the past. Like I've beat um, most of the halos on heroic. Um, solo did not try legendary though like absolutely fucking not my brother wanted to um, and we did we did play some like I think we beat Halo 1 on legendary but we were both done after that <laughs> we were both done after that it's like nah, nah message coming in patching it through Admiral Hackett here commander your helmsman just forwarded your report on Major Kyle we sent in a team as you instructed, Kyle's followers have disbanded, and the Major surrendered to us without incident. We'll make sure he gets the help he needs. To be honest, Shepard, I thought this thing was going to end in a bloodbath. I don't know how you did it, but you saved a lot of lives. Congratulations. That's what I do. I also had a random bashy crash on me and kill me. That's that heroic shit I'm talking about. Because they do modify the uh, the AI code uh, and the harder difficulties. So actually, um, a lot of people don't know this. If you want to play the true Halo experience, you should always play on heroic. Like Bungie built Halo originally to be that hard and then they made a normal mode and an easy mode after that. But um, if you want like the real Halo experience as it's meant to be played, you play on your roller. <laughs> and they they modify the AI um, around the difficulty. One of the only few games that does that. Because um, most games, hard mode is just give the enemies more health and give you less health. And that's hard mode. But the AI actually behaves differently in Halo when you pick a harder difficulty, which is really cool. And then you go from heroic to legendary, you see an entirely different, you know, like the AI is hyper aggressive um, and they're just on your ass. Just wrecking your shit. All right, these are all Citadel missions. We don't need to do that. Tyrion Insignia. Okay, so we do need to go to the Citadel to talk to Nasana, but I'm not gonna go to the Citadel just yet until I, well, you know what, screw it. Like, how much time am I really saving by not talking to her? Commander, urgent message from Alliance Command coming in. I'll patch it through. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here, and you're the only one that can handle it. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. 
We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. Don't worry, Admiral. I'll take that thing out. I know Spectre's answer the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facilities, weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Rear Admiral Mihailovic, Fifth Fleet. We weren't told to expect you, sir. I would have prepared a formal greeting. Spare me the pleasantries. I command the 63rd Scout Flotilla. You and the Normandy were slated for my unit after shakedown. Then the Council got their paws, claws, tentacles, whatever. They got them on our ship and you. I wasn't keen on it either, but there are advantages to being above the law. Don't let the title go to your head. No one's above the law. I don't begrudge the politician's decision to throw you to the Council. It's an opportunity. I do begrudge this over-designed piece of tin, though. The Normandy is a fine ship, sir. She's served us well so far. It's a gimmick, Commander. Useless in a stand-up fight. This experiment diverted billions from our appropriations bills for the same price we could have had a heavy cruiser. But no, we had to make nice to the Turians, throw money in a co-developed boondoggle. I'm here to make an inspection, Commander. Normandy is an Alliance warship. I intend to see she's up to snuff. We'd be honored to show her to you, Admiral. I'll just bet. Wait here. I won't be long. Commander, I'm not happy. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Who designed that CIC? Putting the commander aft of everyone else is inefficient. What if he needs to discuss with the operators toward the bow? Modified Turian style. They prefer commanders looking over their subordinates rather than in the middle of them. We wanted to see how effectively they can command with that setup. Hmm. Reasonable goal, but they should have studied that in a lab rather than on a frontline warship. I had to shake my head at that drive core of yours. 120 billion credits of element zero to make this thing able to move without giving itself away. You realize we could make drive cores for 12,000 fighters with that money? What good is it to hide for a few hours anyway? Useless! We can loiter in an enemy system and monitor traffic or drop infiltration teams on enemy worlds. Normandy could be more effective than the Solarian STG. Maybe, maybe. But that's not the job of a proper warship. We're supposed to find and kill the enemy fleet, not count how many times their garrison goes to the bathroom. And we need to talk about your crew, Commander. <laughs> Krogan? Asari? Turians? What are you thinking, Commander? You can't allow alien nationals free access to Alliance equipment? Between Saren and the Geth, we have enough enemies out here. Treating other species with suspicion and distrust won't win hearts and minds. That assumes the hearts and minds are worth winning. That hasn't been proven yet. You have anything else to say, Commander? Any other justifications for the state of this vessel? I think Normandy is a good ship, sir. Even if you disagree, you have to see that her joint construction and multiracial crew make the Alliance look better. Your job is to look good, Commander. The Alliance Navies is to win wars. I'm not convinced Normandy isn't a waste of taxpayer money. 
but I am convinced that you believe otherwise, and that you'll use it to its best ability. I'll be submitting a report to the Joint Military Council. It will not be as negative as I planned. Good hunting, Commander Shepard. Make us proud. Alright, he came around. He came around. Was he a dick? Yes. But he was a reasonable dick. <laughs> Alliance officials have raided a dangerous cult controlled by a former Alliance officer, Major Kyle. Major Kyle surrendered. I stepped away for a good five minutes. I missed anything or anything you said. <laughs> I don't know where he's at. Um, the only thing I was saying to you was um, if you play Halo on um, heroic difficulty, you're playing it the way it was originally designed. So. Bungie said that if you want to play the real Halo experience, you play it on Heroic because they made normal mode and easy mode um, afterwards. And then Legendary is, of course, Legendary. And they modify the AI uh, with each difficulty level, where most games just give the enemies more health and you less health. Bungie actually made a true difficulty uh, setting. But that, that's all I said, and then everything else was just about Mass Effect. <laughs> but yeah, a dick with reason, they're evolving, yes. Instead of it just being an obtuse dick, which is our default dick, this is different. Commander Shepard? So, uh, this is uh, Kalisa Al-Jelani. Um, she is pretty much like your Fox News reporter. Um... I think she's a reporter for the Westerland News. Western News, uh, the Westerland News, is pretty much a uh, human-centric media organization. So, a uh, human supremacist is a bit too strong of a word, but um, they're they're like they're like human Fox News. Okay, so if you're an alien and you watch Westerland News. You're not going to be happy. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, they do get smarter and harder difficulties. Like when they charge your ass. Hello. Yeah, exactly. Or they'll bait you out. So they'll throw grenades to drive you out of cover. And then shoot you when you run out. So there's a lot of different tactics that the AI will use on harder difficulties. That you just really won't see on the easier ones. Like you'll see it sometimes on normal mode. But heroic and uh, legendary is like happens all the time. It's routine. And grunts just default suicide. Like, they don't even waste time. It's like, okay, it's gonna take everything we have to kill this dude, so that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> so yeah, legendary is unforgiving. Completely unforgiving. Kalisa been seen in Algelani, Westernland News. Would you answer a few questions for our viewers? What do you want to know? You've been given a unique position to represent our race. People want to get a sense of how you'll do that. Humans have been trying to get the respect of the galactic community for 26 years. With that in mind, what are your feelings on being the first human specter? The specters represent the best of every species in the galaxy. To be asked to join them is an honor. Some have said your appointment is the Citadel throwing humans a bone. Have you encountered any situations where the Citadel asked you to place its needs before the needs of Earth? The Council is concerned with the needs of the whole galactic community. We're part of that community now. Our needs are on their agenda, but we're one of many. You really do believe that, don't you? You've been given command of an advanced human warship for your missions. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? Like they know. <laughs> I love when they drop their weapon and just whip out two stickies. Like, they know they're going to die, so they might as well try to kill your ass. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's their reasoning. It's like, if I don't do this, I'm dead anyway. Because this dude is just murdering the entire platoon, so. <laughs> Actually, the Normandy was co-developed by human and Turian engineers. Its design incorporates many innovations, all of which are classified, I'm afraid. So, the Turians have knowledge of the Normandy that is being kept secret from the Alliance public? Do you think it was appropriate to hand Earth's most advanced warship over to the Citadel? I wasn't aware it had been handed over to anyone. I'm in command, and last I checked, I'm human. Same goes for my crew. Human, yes, but you do work for the Citadel now, Commander. One last question, Commander. 
Rumors back home say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on that? I'm afraid I can't comment on whatever my current assignment may or may not be. Don't worry, we'll find out. The eyes of Earth are on you. Don't let us down. Thank you for your time, Commander Shepard. Alright. So, um... There's actually going to be um, a little bit of fallout from that particular interview, but depending on how you handle it, um, you know, it'll have you looking good or looking bad. Because again, um, the Westernland News, they're not... In breaking news, Chairman Burns of the Parliament Subcommittee on Transhuman Studies has been kidnapped by biotic extremists. The biotics commandeered a freighter and were last seen in the Hades Gamma. They always find out. No yes, yes. The media will find out. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Uh, the media finds out eventually. You know, and if you're too good at your job, then you end up missing. So <laughs> that's the unfortunate truth of it. Reporters definitely know how to work their sources. You know, being a reporter, being a spy is very similar because um, you're pretty much using like the same uh, tradecraft, making sure you're not being tailed, making sure you're not being followed, making sure you're not being recognized except to the sources that you need to report a story. Um, the only difference is a spy doesn't introduce themselves as a spy. A journalist has to, you know, introduce themselves as a journalist otherwise you're just a random person crying and people are going to assume you're a spy <laughs> so i think the best spy is one that's a reporter because you know that's like the perfect cover it's like well why are you asking these classified questions oh i'm a reporter <laughs> i am not an agent for uh, the cia <laughs> i'm a reporter commander shepherd i am nasana dantius i see you got my message it sounded like you needed some help. I do. My sister Dahlia is a crewman on the cargo vessel operating out beyond the fringes of the Traverse. Her ship was attacked by privateers. There were no reported survivors. You want me to hunt down the people who killed her? This is where it gets complicated. Last week, I received a message with her voice on it. Dahlia is alive. The rest of the crew was killed, but she was taken prisoner. The slavers demanded a huge ransom from me in exchange for returning her unharmed. Why didn't the raiders kill Dahlia along with everyone else? My sister probably told them who she was. My family's very wealthy, Shepard. They must have realized she was worth more to them alive. Do you want me to deliver the ransom? I've already transferred the funds to the account they specified. Only they never released her. They haven't contacted me since. I've made a terrible mistake, Shepard. I'm a diplomatic emissary. By law, I'm required to report any attempted extortion to CSEC immediately. But I was afraid for Dahlia, so I just paid the ransom. Now she's still missing. And if anyone finds out what I did, I could end up in jail. Why would they put you in jail? You're the victim here. Government representatives on the Citadel are not allowed to negotiate with terrorists. It's too dangerous. Paying a ransom would only encourage more kidnappings. I support the law in theory, but when I got the message, all I could think about was Dahlia's safety. I doubt they would actually send me to prison for what I did, but they would strip me of my post, and Dahlia would still be in the hands of the slavers. You want me to find her and bring her back? You only need to bring her back. I've already found her for you. I tracked the ransom payment through several accounts. Eventually, it led to a small mercenary band operating out of the Artemis Tau Cluster. I need you to go to the Merc base, take them out, and bring my sister back. You shall be well rewarded. How'd you find out who was behind the ransom? I have resources. Contacts and credits can go a long way. Especially if you're willing to bend the rules. I already broke the law when I paid the ransom. This couldn't make things any worse. Can't you hire someone else to do this? I do not want to take chances with my sister's life. I need a specter. Besides, 
You operate outside official channels. My superiors cannot find out I never reported the ransom in the first place. Anything you can tell me about the mercs who have your sister? Pretty much what you'd expect. Rough, dangerous, and well-armed. Nothing a Spectre cannot handle, though. Don't worry. I'll bring your sister back. Thank you, Shepard. I knew you were the right woman for the job. Come back and see me when the job is done. Alright, so now that we have that mission, we can actually head back out. We don't need to be here on the Citadel anymore. Actually, let me check the CSEC office here. There's Executive Pallet, uh, but we don't really need to talk to him. It's just sometimes, like, when you're in the embassies, you'll find new missions that pop up. And you just, uh... Adam to your to-do list. <laughs> Pretty much. In remembrance of Eden Prime, we present another Profile in Courage with serviceman Nirali Bhatia. A devoted wife and talented chef, serviceman Bhatia joined the Alliance military under the Deferred Education Plan. After finishing her service, Bhatia planned to open a restaurant. Instead, she gave her life protecting the colonists of Eden Prime. For more Profiles in Courage, or to explore opportunities in the military, please visit the Alliance military on the extranet. Keyword, courage. Do we scan this guy? Oh. Finishing that quest is kind of, uh, kind of, uh, Sorry, but you don't need to do it. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Logged. The commanding officer is aboard. Exo Presley stands relieved. Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander, Miss Algelani's story on you just aired. She shouldn't have ambushed you like that. But you handled it pretty well. We had differences of opinion, sir. I hope she at least believed my sincerity. You handled yourself pretty well, Commander. She came across like a raving idiot. <laughs> just wanted to let you know what the response was back home. I won't keep you any longer. Fifth Fleet out. Gotta shut him down. Gotta shut him down. Like people in the media verse are worse, like, like, it's hacky, very hacky, so. How you handle that quest is a pretty good uh, template. Like, if you are in a situation where you deal with the media, that's, that's how you want to do it. What? Fanatical biotics in the Hades Gamma Cluster have kidnapped the chairman of Parliament Subcommittee on Transhuman Studies and a hold of the Derelict Fighter and Paranormal System. Oh, great. Okay, so we got another hostage situation. And this is in Hades Gamma Paranormal System.
think this is it. MSV Ontario. Which is pretty funny, um, because Bioware is a Canadian a Canadian company. Um the name came from the founders who no longer are with the company, but um, they were both doctors, actually medical doctors. They went to medical school and then decided to make video games <laughs> instead. So like, imagine, imagine like you go through med school, you do your residency, you get your MD, and then you're like, fuck it, I'm making video games. And so that's how we got Bioware. But a little trivia like that is always a treat. All right, so it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to talk our way uh, through this situation. So we're just gonna go ahead and get prepared for hardball here. And I'll be right back before we reach this facility. Um, gotta check up on my cat. But learned my lesson this time. I need to actually mute the freaking. Yeah, we're just gonna mute sound effects and volume. And throw up our be right back. Throw up our music. And uh, yeah, we are
fix a memory to remember that once again I'm feeling anxious. The way you talk and calms my temper, you bring me back to my virtues. At midnight, the explosion will happen. I see you running in slow motion on this race against the clock, like the stars in rotation. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I'm back. And yeah, this was pretty. I like this song too. Constellation Duskus Remix by Petite Biscuit. <laughs> Petite Biscuit. I like it. I like it. Um. All right, let's go ahead. Get this back to normal. Boom, boom. All right. Cocked and locked, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. All right. We can go handgun crew. Um, and we're probably going to want to do that because we need precision shots. We probably don't want to spray and pray. Even though there's one... Um, High value target here, just one. Alright, so we're kinda getting funneled. They know we're here, so it's like no point. Uh but yeah, these are these are bionic terrorists, so it's just weapons fucking free, man. Um get this party started. Intruders! Kill the See what I'm saying? Like how debilitating it is to be hit by biotics. Like it really just it, it fucks you up. Alright, I gotta get the cover. Look out! And I need to I need to go. Many shell deploy. See, I don't see the target. <laughs> Dizzy dead. Yeah. Literally. Like, it's so bad. It's so bad. I got it. Should be a door for this particular type of ship, but um, yeah, there it is. Like the ships have like a flow to them, and that makes any sense. See how it is? You write letters, and everyone ignores you. Force is the only thing people appreciate. So how about if I kill Chairman Burns and finish this charade? Please, I was trying to help you people. Let's not do anything we're all gonna regret. Why not? What have we got to lose? Since the chairman here decided that we didn't get reparations, we've got nothing left to live for. But I've changed my mind. Seeing you all, it, it's, it's clear that you all deserve... You had your chance. Some L2s are nearly crippled from side effects of the implants, but you voted against reparations. Think about this. Burns is the one man who can help you. Yes, if you release me, I can take another look at the reparations request. What? We're supposed to trust you? I'm an L2, like you. Trust me. The commander can make sure that Burns follows through. Sure. You promise us freedom and say everything will be fine, but as soon as we surrender, you'll double-cross us. I'm not promising to let you go. All I'm saying is that Burns will take another look. Right, Burns? Absolutely. I had no idea that the L2 biotics were this desperate. If I'd known, the reparations will come. For whatever it's worth, I promise that.
You're right. I don't want to die. Maybe something will happen this time. We surrender. Thank you, Commander. I thought I was dead when they took me. I'll see to it that the reparations discussion is reopened. I didn't know they were so desperate. Then you weren't doing your job. A Fifth Fleet cruiser will pick you and the prisoners up. Alright, so you saved the VIP. It's not drowning in a pool of his own blood. Shit, alright. We're probably gonna have to use zombie gel. But alright, yeah. So that's why we that's why we save it. That's why we save it. So we can do that. Alright. But yeah, I mean, you know, I feel bad for the other L2s that are like dead. But I mean, granted, you know, it didn't exactly give us a, an opportunity to negotiate. They're, they had already taken a defensive position, so. But yeah, I shot first. I definitely shot first. On shot first, right? <laughs> That uh, a little controversy um, with um, Star Wars. I think at the time there was like some rumor going around that Disney was going to um, edit the scene where Han Solo, uh, Han Solo shot the, the dude in the cantina. He, sh he shoots him first in the in the original film. And um, the rumor was that this team was going to edit it, and the uh, guy in question would attack Han first, and Han would defend himself. Um, and the fans were like, no, don't do that. Um, and I was one of them. I'm like, you know, Han is a smuggler. He's a hustler. He's he's an anti-hero. Like, you, you can't Disneyfy Han Solo, okay? You can't do that. Like, you just want everyone in the canon to be this do-gooder hero that's never made any mistakes and that's just not who Han Solo is that's not the vision that George Lucas had for him um, so yeah it would, it would have been a big a big slap in the face for sure but it was just a rumor like it wasn't it wasn't something that ever actually uh, became something it is... Message coming in. Patching it through. Thank you for dealing with the hostage situation, Commander. Chairman Burns was quite impressed by the way you resolved the situation peacefully. Your assistance above and beyond the formal duties has been noted, Commander. Fifth fleet out. Yeah, man, I got a fuck ton of, uh, brownie points. I'll be able to redeem them for my own heavy cruiser at this point.
those can take it from here. better if they just wanted to negotiate like um yeah because these suits against the mako no shot no shot they stood no chance whatsoever all right i actually didn't want to do that i could have saved that uh I'm in jail, but oh well, what's done is done. Um, Alright, let's see. This wasn't even a thing that I was looking for. <laughs> Alright, bro, have a good one. I'm gonna uh, uh, end stream soon. that have crashed into the planet. Alright, so that was actually what was causing the problem. So that transmitter was um, tricking the satellites into going to it. <laughs> And uh, they crash as a result. And that's why we have all the satellites.
Ghost long gone now. I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't look okay. Are you okay? I also realized that she has like her default armor. I think got armor for Rex as well. Heavy armor. But he can't wear it, so that tells me that we gotta upgrade his combat armor. Now he can wear it. But we need him to max out immunity. Immunity is super powerful. We wanna make him as inky as possible. That's what makes him such a great character because he has um, pretty much everything he needs to just dominate the battle space. Alright, and then Ash, get rid of heavy armor upper. And then we already maxed her fitness out, which really didn't help her all that much because like, she was the first to go down. But granted, these are some really kinky ass husks. Like, oh my god. You'll normally run into it like that. Alright, so everyone's leveled up. Go ahead, go through equipment. And so there's medium armor and there's heavy. There she is. Alright, boom. And then Rex. Do that armor set right there. Also didn't help that he was running like freaking basic basic kit. Like, this is all really basic. <laughs> this is all level all level one stuff. Like yeah, that's uh, that's probably why another reason why we struggle so much. Like I mean, granted, I should have struggled that much because I am running the latest and greatest. This stage of Bioware where it wasn't exactly sure what they were gonna do with the husk. Cause like this is definitely Reaper Tech, but I'm not seeing anything that like necessarily necess necessitates the husk transfer. Like if anything, they would have just been indoctrinated and um, you know just started doing reaper shit maybe sought out sovereign but that's not the case here it just kind of turned the husk so maybe they were thinking that, you know, Reaper Tech could just turn you into Husk at will. We know in the later games that it's a conversion process. I mean, even in this game, it was a conversion process. Um, they would put you on those uh, spikes, and um, the nanites in the spikes would convert your body um, to a husk. I think that's how you make husk. Yeah, we're done.
done here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead. Turn. Wait, why is that still question mark? I still need to go to that question mark. So we're not done. We're not done just yet. But I don't know if I can because I didn't see an option to collect the answers. Unless it is where that anomaly is. But this is where the research team is or should be. So this is it right here in the center of the room. As you can see, we get an option to scan it or anything like that. So maybe this isn't it. Maybe I do need to head to that question mark. Maybe, maybe that is some of the research team escape. That could be where I'm going now. In the old game, you could literally just bait him out um, by going in circles, and he was actually pretty easy to kill. But um, yeah, now <laughs> he's not—he's not easy to kill at all.
But um, I do like how they reworked the uh, Thresher Mob fights because they're pretty repetitive. Like my least favorite part of the classic Mass Effect 1. Uh, because I was literally just doing that, driving star goals and just pelted until I died. But uh, now you have to target the sensory uh, tentacles. Or he'll just track you and, and destroy you. Alright, so that actually had nothing to do with the mission. Yeah, that was just, uh, that was an aside. So, you found the missing research, log entries indicate it's covered. Yeah, like, we can't, we can't scan it, so there's no, there's no way for us to complete the mission. So, it could be bugged. Um, I'm not going to waste more time on it, um, because it's time for me to end stream anyway. It's five o'clock, um, time to get dinner ready, and, um, yeah, so, that's what we're gonna do. Um, but anywho, thank you guys, um, for coming by, hanging out, saying hi, and, uh, we'll pick this up in the future. May or may not stream tomorrow, not exactly sure, but, um, yeah. This was, uh, this was good as always, so, uh, take it easy, everyone.